Good evening. Good evening, Eric. In the GSP, for which you are all going to apply next year, we have a tradition. Sierra, you were this summer. When somebody says good evening, Everybody says good evening back, so I'm going to say it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming tonight. My name is Aris Cedeno. Now, you can guess from my accent that I was not born in Kentucky. <laughs> but I came to Kentucky many years ago, 1991. I'm originally from Panama came to study, went to Michigan State, and got my first job at the University of Louisville in 1991. I applied to teach in a program called Governor Scholars Program for the summer of 1992. And I was hired, and I was sent to a campus called Murray State University. I drove all the way to Murray, passing through E-Town, Grayson County, Muhlenberg County, and it seemed that the counties never finished. <laughs> when I got to Murray State, the dean of the campus, of the GSP campus, says, <clears throat> Aris, it's not the end of the world. Will, I just said, it may not be the end of the world, but you can see it from here. <laughs> After that, I loved my first summer at the end of the world. <clears throat> the only stop where you can get something to eat is E-Town. <laughs> so next week when I do this event at Murray, and I have to drive back the same night on Tuesday, I will eat in E-Town, and I rush to eat before they close. Now they are open later. So I'm very familiar with this county, and all the schools that we have here tonight are only Harding County schools, all schools represented. So let me welcome all of you from Central Harding, North Harding, Eta Elizabeth Town, John Harding, Fort Knox, and North Harding Christian schools here in this town. The purpose is to explain to you the very competitive application process to become a 2022 Governor Scholar. It is a long process and I know that we are coming to this event a little bit late in the recruiting season. Our recruiting season begins September 1st first or second week in September, and ends next week. And so I hope that many of you have already begun your application. If you have not, there's still time, but you will have to create a timetable for you to have it on time to your high school. I am not going to speak to you for two hours, but maybe one hour and 15 minutes you received a packet of information that is also in our website. In our website, you also have videos and some of the information that I am sharing tonight are in those videos because we were not sure we could do this this year in person. We're very glad to come, but because we were not sure, we had to create some videos. So if you um, need additional information, you can check those videos. The program, and I'm going to um, go from uh, the first si uh, set of pages here. I know you have one whole packet. On page number two, you can apply if you attend as a junior one of the schools in Kentucky, high schools. You are returning to your school, doesn't have to be the same school, but a school in Kentucky. You are a resident of the state of Kentucky, and you must have an ACT, ACT, PSAT, or SAT score. 
There is no minimum required, but um, the higher, of course, the better, but you need one of those scores. Um, on page number two, at the bottom of page number two, I'm sorry, page number three, I just came back from Athens, Greece last night on my vacation, and I don't know what numbers are in, in, in this language anymore. <laughs> on page number three, you have at the bottom a framed information. That framed information tells you that if you apply and you are accepted, and in turn you accept our invitation, you um, will attend one of our three sites free of charge. Remember this, the real passport to get into the GSP is the application, is not a check. Although a few years ago on one of our campuses I was talking to the parents on opening day and one father raised the hand and the father says, Aris, they all call me by my first name right here. Aris, how's the food? And I said, food is free. And the food is free. Remember that you don't pay tuition. The governor's office, the legislators, and the private donors provide the money and the funding for you to attend the summer you will see here today from me how passionate I am about the program. You heard that I went to the U of L as a professor. I went through all my rankings and when I got my full professorship title, I resigned to stay with the GSP on a full time, doing what I do now as the executive director. It is an extraordinary program, but you don't listen to me only. You may have students in your senior uh, class who attended this past summer. I have one here who is going to share with you her own experiences. But there are students in your high schools. Mom and dad, you also need to talk to other parents about the experience because it is five weeks. It is five weeks away from home. For some of you, at the beginning, it is a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. But for many of you, it's not soon enough to go away for five weeks. <laughs> but keep in mind that that's a decision that you will have to make with your parents. Mom and dad, you will drop your precious daughter, your handsome son, on one of our campuses and you come back to a town, it's not that far away, um, crying a little bit because you are proud. Two weeks later, you come back for a day that we call Family Day. You come back home and you cry a little bit less. Then you come back to campus three weeks later for graduation. And who cry? Everyone. The students cry, and they will tell you, Mom, I don't want to go home. Dad, I, I just, I love you, but can I stay? Mom and Dad, it's enough for me to have them five weeks. Take them back. <laughs> they are great. They're wonderful. But they're 17 years of age, and we are with them, okay? We are. We don't have a co-ed um, dorms, it's males, females, and the faculty members and administrators remain on the campus where, you, where they are teaching. So we create an extraordinary community of learners. It is an extraordinary community for which you need to write an extraordinary application. What you will be doing a year from now is using the same application to apply for a college. There are three myths or misconceptions associated with the GSP. Misconception number one, that we are trying to keep you in Kentucky. Well, 
If you go to Kentucky's colleges and universities, it's great. And we actually, about 80% of our graduates go to Kentucky colleges and universities. We accept every year 1,050 students. That's the number for next year. If 80% stays in Kentucky, we are proud of that and very happy. You don't have to go. If you choose to go somewhere else, that is not a reason not to attend the GSP. Okay? Misconception number two, that you get scholarships from us. We don't. The colleges do. With your permission, we will provide your name to the colleges in Kentucky, and then they recognize you as a graduate of the GSP and will give you at different levels the scholarships, not us. And don't do this for the scholarships. You're going to get it anyway. And misconception number three, that we are an academic program. Academics are extremely important to us. That's, but it is only one of the components. It is the creation of a community, and our mission is to enhance Kentucky's next generation of civic and economic leaders. Those of you sitting in this room that receive the invitation are our future leaders. As some of us will be retiring in the next weeks, no, next years, not yet, uh, in the next few years, some of you will be thinking about positions of leadership in whatever field you decide to go. Again, don't listen only to me. Listen to the students that attended the GSP, the parents who have had children in the GSP. In the last 39 years, 2022 will mark our 40th anniversary. And we have now 33,000 plus alums, which makes Kentucky's program, this one, the largest in the entire nation. We are the only one that accepts 1,000 plus in the whole country. And so, if you, and we get the money for this, to do this free of charge. If you don't use the money, you know what's going to happen. Somebody's going to take it from us. You know Frankfurt, where, where I work. But listen to others, and I have one of our GSP uh, graduates from um, Central Harding, and I'm going to invite her to uh, say a few words on behalf of the GSP class of 2021 and on behalf of the students from Harding County. Please welcome Sierra Bersin. Thank you, Aries. My name is Sierra Bayasin. I'm at IMEs from Central Harding High School here in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. I was a 2021 Governor Scholar at the Center College, and I'm here to share a little bit about my experience at the Governor Scholar Program. So last year, when I was applying to the Governor Scholar Program, I was approached by different people who were trying to tell me what it was about. So some people would tell me, this is an academic program. You were there to better your academic understandings. Then certain alums would tell me, no, Sierra, it's not just the academic aspect and getting the college experience while in high school. It's also about the social aspect and putting yourself out there. From my experience, I would say that it's a bit of both. Whether it's the academic or social aspects of your life that you're trying to improve, you can get both of that at your GSP experience. Now, when I say this, you, I mean, GSP is a great way to build connections and put yourself out there. We were told to try something new every day, try something scary, if you will. And this is to just build your personal growth. And you will grow a lot at GSP. As Aris said, you will go home crying on the last day because not just the connections you made and the classes you took, which you may or may not miss, but the people you meet there are so incredible. And they're also academically minded and they will inspire you every day to do different things. And so now as you're applying this year, I hope that you really try to sell yourself because this is an amazing program to be a part of and it is so important to your future. Thank you.
people here before you go. Did you die? And stay here, don't go see it. Because I have a question for you. Huh? Hey, Sierra. Because I'm going to explain to these people some things later. What was you, you know, the score of the GSP is based on 100 points. What was your score? I don't think I saw my own score, but if I'm being honest, I don't think I was one of the highest ones. Well, they don't. Thank you, Sierra. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome to stay, or if you need to leave at any time, please, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. The students don't know the points, the score. And this is an advice. Don't focus on how many points you are going to get. Whether you get the highest, in 2021, the highest was 87, or the, I'm sorry, 86 in 2021. 87 has been the highest ever. Or you got the lowest to get in this year was 73. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you get in. Remember that. But to get in, you need to focus on the application, follow the instructions. It is a long application, so don't take it the last day. You need to do it earlier. And I'll give you some tips on how to approach each of the sections with the examples that you have in that packet. What you will see is that Beginning the application, you will sign for a focus area or major. You have those on pages four, five, and six. What, what was yours? Spanish language and culture. Oh, and Espanol. <laughs> Whatever you do, remember, there are no grades. There are no academic credits. There's no even competition for who is the best. Once you get into the program, you are already the best. You don't have to compete in that classroom for a better class. You check three of those subjects, check whatever you think is, but don't check that subject because you are going to be in the future a doctor, you need to do health care here. Some mothers and fathers call us and say to us, my daughter, my daughter needs health care because she's going to be, no, she doesn't. That's college later in life, and we understand that. But in the GSP, it's more than the academics. Choose something that you think you perhaps are never going to do in life. You will not go wrong with any of the subjects. If you need to know what those subjects have done in the last 10 years, go to our website and check what we call the academic reports. All the academic reports in the last 10 years talk about what each class did every summer. So you need to, you know, that gives you an idea. But don't worry about what class. Worry about getting into the GSP. Let's see. On page number seven, you have the state competition deadlines. Now, this is for the state. You need to check, if you don't know it yet, with your respective counselor, school counselors. And I have at least two or three sitting in the back for, from certain schools here. But they will tell you when is the deadline for your school. We don't determine that. The schools do. So you need to check that. In, on this page, I would like for you to look at the bottom of the page and see the dates for next summer three sessions. While we know the dates, we don't know what college is going to be first, second, or third. And that's why we call them sessions. Next summer, our colleges or host sites will be Center College in Danville. That's where you went. Moorhead State University in Moorhead and Bellarmine University in Louisville. Those are the three sites for next summer. The students don't choose 
decide unless they have a real, really valid reason that applies to the student, not to the mother or the father of the family. And I know there are many real reasons, but we cannot honor all of them. So we limit the reasons to the students. For instance, if a student needs to attend marching band camp at the end of the summer, it's a reason to request session number one. Another example, and these are just examples. If a student is participating in a mission trip, whether abroad or um, domestic, and that, and that mission trip takes place in the earlier part of the summer, then you can request session number two or number three. What cannot happen is for you to arrive late or depart earlier. The commitment is for five full weeks. Understanding that we will have about every year about 100 students on a waiting list that could go at any time for the five weeks. So we need to honor that. You will learn also through this rule that students like you will be facing choices in life. And one of the best lessons for you is to learn how to make the best choice. I believe, you believe, Sierra, that the GSP is an extraordinary choice. But we certainly understand that you may have other choices as well. On page eight, you have the actual breakdown of the 100 points. As I said before, don't focus on the points. Everybody is going to lose points. You may be thinking after today's, I, I will not make it. That's not for you to say it. That's for the judges based on your application. The first 30 points is mathematically counted and given to us by your counselors. In your hands, young men and women here, in your hands, part B, student profile, extracurriculars, service, honors. In your hands, also, point C, writing entry. And then two recommendations for which you need to select the recommenders earlier while you are working on parts B and C. We will give you hints for each of those sections, and, but you have a lot of examples here and, and guidelines, um, not only in this document, but also in, on our website. On page 11. You have here the actual points you get for your ACT or PSAT or SAT and your GPA. Keep in mind that if you have taken more than one of these standardized tests, your counselor will be instructed to choose the one that gives you more points. Some of you are looking at these points and are already telling your mom or your dad, I am losing points. Everybody is going to lose points. If you make it between 73 and 86, I'm telling you, it's almost your ear in. You need to avoid those 200 to 300 people that fall between 69 and 72. There's a huge number of students who traditionally fall between 69 and 72. Some of them will be placed as alternates and many of them will make it. But it's much better if you get 73 or above. If you feel weak in one of the sections, you need to make sure that you balance your weaknesses with strengths.
on, pa on pages 15 or so to 21, you have the first section we would like to talk about and give you some hints. This section is called extracurricular activities. You have here samples, examples, and you also have the scoring guidelines that the judges will use at the state level. Let me share with you how we define extracurricular activities. And please follow the instructions. Um, and it is anything that you do beyond your classroom contact hours. It is anything you do within the time frame that you have, you know, 9th, 10th, 11th grade, with some um, um, exceptions. But uh, keep in mind that it's anything. Let me see your, raise your hand high if you babysit. Look, that is an activity. That is not necessarily here, but it comes under service, okay? Keep in mind that we want to know everything that makes you who you are. That's the purpose of this application, who you are. Not only what you do. What you do means you will be listing, and listing in this competition is not enough. So follow the examples to explain and explain to us and to the judges how in detail you participate in each of these activities. What is your leadership role? Not only your title, but your participation. What you gain, what are the insights that you receive from participating in these activities. It is important that you take your time to explain to us all that. Let me explain to you one thing, um, because this competition is different. When you apply to college, the competition is vertical. The A students, there are B students, there are C students, there are D students, and they get vertically according to where they fall. In the GSP, there are no B, Cs, or Ds. Everybody is right here. And so, because of that, the competition is horizontal. So it's not that you are best than somebody here. Remember that in the GSP, you are already best. And when I have almost 2,000 best, and I have only 1,050 spots, then you want to be the best of the best. You're still the best, but you need to demonstrate that in the application. Keeping that, that in mind that it's not only I have a 4.0, really that it's not the average GPA in the class of 2021 was 3.98. And so that doesn't break any ties, okay? So keep in mind that it's a, it's a very competitive process. On pages 22 to 26, you have one section called service. This is where babysitting goes. How we define service. Service is anything you do to help others. Anything you do to help others, and it could be voluntary or paid. If you work to support your family, if you work to support yourself, to buy a car or save money for college. Working builds character, and we want to know about it. So voluntary or paid. Some of you may feel that you don't have enough. I think you do. 
And I'm going to say here, don't be afraid of saying what you think should be said. You know, when you take a test and you don't know the answer, you sometimes leave it blank because you don't want to be embarrassed by answering something that is may not be. We do, we see that in the kind of students that you are. In the GSP, the judges are instructed to ignore what does not count, not to give you points off. So if there's something that doesn't count towards that particular section, the judges will simply ignore. So don't skip anything because you think it doesn't count. Just, I'm gonna give you an example of what doesn't count. Getting your driver's license is not an honor in this competition, okay? Getting, you can write it. You have no idea how much fun we have and how many times we count on a board with sticks like this, one, two, three, and at the end we have six, 700 students who put getting the driver's license as an honor. That's an honor for you, but when you get to my age, you want somebody else to get that driver's license for you. You don't want to drive yourself. And so you can put it down, you're not going to get points off. You are simply, they are going to ignore that. That doesn't count. And so you know what service is. If you don't have enough service at this point, I will advise, perhaps, and I don't know how much time you have in your high school, but perhaps a few things you can do in the next few weeks to enhance this section. Halloween is around the corner. Christmas, Thanksgiving, those are opportunities for you to help others. And there may be other holidays in your families that I don't know about. Use those opportunities to help others. Do you like animals? Volunteer at a local clinic and help the animals. You know, uh, anything that allows in, the ch in your church, wherever, if you feel that you are, you don't have enough here, just go ahead and do some things in the next few weeks. Try, as Sierra said, something new. Don't be afraid. That is what makes you a leader not to be afraid to try new things in life. And you have that drive. On pages 27 to 30, you have a section called Honors and Awards. Those are two different things. And I'm going to explain to you how we define honors and separately awards. Both are recognitions that you have received. In the case of the awards, you have a concrete evidence. You have a trophy, a letter of recognition, a certificate, a diploma. You can demonstrate it, it's tangible. That is an award. But you may also be recognized with an applause, and I'll give you an example, or a thank you from the principal. Those are honors. If the principal of your high school says, would you mind attending a town hall meeting to represent your school? You do, you go, you report back, and the principal says, thank you. We appreciate it. You were chosen. You were asked to go, nobody else. That is an honor. That is an honor. And remember, honors, you don't need an evidence in your hands. You may sing very well, and somebody says, would you mind singing the national anthem at the football game? I'm gonna choose baseball, I prefer baseball. At the baseball game, and you said, yes, I will. You sing, 
Everybody says how beautiful your voice is. Everybody claps, and that's all. You were chosen. And so, honors and awards are defined by the Governor Scholars Program as anything for which you have been chosen, selected, or elected. Anything for which you have been chosen, selected, or elected. That is why your driver's license is not given to you. You choose that. That's different. Okay. Remember that the driver's license is not an honor. You can still enlighten our days judging those applications if you want to do that. Before I go to the next section, I'm going to explain something very important that you may not know at this stage in your life. Some of the things that you do may be classified in more than one of those three sections. What you do, extracurricular judges are three and they meet in this room here. There's a wall. Room number two for judges of service. And all what they see is service. Room number three for judges of honors and awards. And all what they see is honors and awards. And they don't share with the other sections. And so if one activity falls under more than one category, you need to repeat. You need to repeat based on the instructions for that category, but you need to repeat. You need all the judges to know what you do. I'll give you at least two examples here, or three. Example number one, your AP biology teacher or mathematics or foreign languages says, hey Sierra, you're my best student in Spanish. Would you mind tutoring my freshman class? And, for, and Sierra says, yes, I will. And she will, and she does that. She goes and tutors those students. And so where she classifies that activity? Number one, she was chosen by the teacher. That's an honor. Number two, she helps others. That is service. And number three, she does that activity beyond her classroom contact hours. That's an extracurricular. You repeat. Another example, the pastor, minister, priest of your church asks you to participate, organize, teach Sunday school, work with the choir and church, or some things like that. You were chosen. If you were chosen, that is an honor. If you do it, that is an activity. And through that activity, you are helping others. That is to be repeated, okay? Those are examples that I, some of you are members of teams in your high school or organizations. National Beta, you know, the Beta Club, I don't know how you call that, the, the Beta. Or sports, or academic team, or mock trial, or dance team. Any team in the school counts as an activity. Within that activity, you may do some service. Some organizations better does that. Um, Honor Society also, they do fundraisings to help others and, and things like that. That's service. And it so happens that you were chosen, elected, or selected captain, editor of the newspaper, president, treasurer of the organization, and that's the honor. So you have to explain accordingly, but don't skip it, because it's important for all the judges to see the whole 
you. Remember, the best instruction for the judges is tell us who this person is, not only what this person does, okay? On pages 31 to 34, you have a section called writing entry. No examples intentionally done here. Page 31, general instructions. Page 32, the very detailed um, <clears throat> instructions for the judges. Page 33, some specific um, steps. And page 34, you have the actual writing prompts. Excuse me. You, you have the actual writing prompts. You choose one of those. Read the whole prompt, address the entire prompt, and I'm going to give you some tips or hints that come from the judges. Number one, and this is the biggest, spelling. Spelling and spelling. The word you spells, and I have to say this because the many times we see it spells as a you only. That's in your text. And texting is fine. And maybe when I retire from my, my composition classes at U of L one of these years, um, they will accept you as a you only. But it does not show you as the best. Spelling is important. A few years ago, one high school, not in this county, did not choose one student. And the father called me very adamant that the school had made a mistake. And I said, I'm not going to change the school decision, but I can take a look and tell you what was wrong, if that can help. Fax to me the application. And as soon as I look at the first page, the first page, I didn't have to go beyond that. The number of mistakes, spelling mistakes, give a visual image that you're not a good student. And so you need to be very careful about spelling. And that's why you need to take time. Point number two, you will tackle probably these uh, writing entry as a research essay. No, it is not a research essay, and we don't call this an essay. It's a writing entry. Call that intentionally so that you write your own story. Tell us who you are in those 500 words. And I know that 500 words is not enough for some people who write long paragraphs. But don't repeat. There are ways that you don't repeat words, avoid words, use commas, and you know, make sure that you tell us a story. Just imagine if you were a judge in this section and you have to read 2,000 of these writing entries, and some of those are boring. And when you get an enlightened one that gives you, wow, look at this story, needless to say, you are gonna get more points, okay? Because sometimes uh, it is just a boring, uh, you treat it like an essay, don't do that. For that matter, I'm going to advise you, and you, some of the counselors in the back are listening to me here, I'm going to advise that you, before turn that writing entry into the hands of the counselor, ask two readers. Two. One, which I call a professional reader. Your English teacher is a professional reader. 
Professional readers are those like me. I teach composition and literary studies. That's what I do. Pro professional readers are those who do reading and writing for a living. That's what we do. And therefore, we focus on spelling, punctuation, syntax, grammar, all those things that you hate in the English classes. We know that. I can tell you that because my students tell me that right away. We, they don't like it. But that's not the only thing a writing entry should, should have. That's important. I'm not saying no. The second reader should be somebody who is not a professional reader. They don't do that for a living. They do that for enjoyment. My grandmother was my reader when I was in high school. And she will say, I don't get it. I say, Grandma, it is written in, you know, very professional way. And she said, but the message doesn't get to me. That's the reader you need to know because if that reader doesn't get the message, maybe our judges are not getting the message either. And so two readers, one professional that helps with the technicalities and one that helps with the message and the content. We want to know something about you. Place yourself in that essay. Well, in that re uh, writing entry, not essay, I'm sorry. It is important that you also check that it makes sense and that you have covered all the points of the prompt. The prompt has several sections, if you may notice that. Some of them are highlighted, but that's not, that's the key, that's the core point of the section. But there are several points in that prompt that you need to make sure that you are addressing, okay? Keep in mind that. On, let's talk about the last two sections, that is the recommendations. On pages 35, to 39, you have teacher recommendations. On pages 40 to 45, community recommendations. And remember that while you are working on the other sections, you need to make sure that your recommenders have been asked with enough time. Teacher recommendation, and you know who is going to be your teacher. You know the teacher. The teacher will focus on you as a student. But that is only half of one coin. The other half is you as a person, you as an individual, you as a citizen, you as a leader in the community, and that second letter is written by someone in the community who knows you well. We advise that your community recommender be not associated with the high school. Not because they cannot, it's just because they will recommend you as a student. And the, the judges will not count that on your uh, 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 as a good letter. We need to see two sides of who you are. You are a student, but at the same time, you are a person. And so that's the purpose of these two letters. Who can you choose in, your, in the community? Anyone who knows you well. Anyone who knows you extremely well is fine. Doesn't have somebody to be somebody with a title, an elected official, unless they know you well. Could be somebody from church, could be somebody from work, in your neighborhood, and mom and dad. It is important that if you, mom or dad, are the ones suggesting the person, to let that person know that they should not be talking about you, mom or dad, because that doesn't count. You are wonderful, but that doesn't help your son or your daughter. 
the recommendation is about the applicant. And we have many letters that talk, paragraph about how all the relationship and the friendship between the recommender and the dad goes back to when they were roommates in college. We don't need to hear all that. It's about the applicant and how you are going to ask for these letters. I have written many letters of recommendation in my life and you will need many letters in your life, not only for the GSP, but for college, for jobs, many, many letters. Uh, and you need to make sure that you are proactive. Number one, you're going to ask immediately, could you recommend me? When somebody approaches me, I will say, when is it due? And the student says, it's due November 1st. I have, no, no, November 1st is next week, right? Yeah, yeah, soon, no, December 1st. They normally give me a month, December 1st. And the student says, Aris, you were my teacher two years ago. I have done many things in the last two years that you may not know. So, I went ahead and printed this half page of things that I have done. <laughs> take it. And I will take it being very appreciative because they are giving me the, the things that I have to say. I will write it with my words, but I have it in my hands. And the student says, Aris, I know you can find the form on the, on, on, you know, electronically, but you know, I know you're busy, Aris. And so I copied that form for you. It is the form here. I have now the form. I have more information to write a letter for you. And I have a month to do that. How wonderful it is. Now, let's talk about the student that doesn't do that. And I'm going to give you a specific example, a real one. A few years ago, one student texted me. And I accept my students' texts. I, I, I allow them to. And the student said, recommendation, with no question mark, which for a Professor in composition is a, the biggest thing you can do. But you understand that a student who knows that and still misses that is probably worried about something else. And so I texted back and I said, when? And I didn't put the question mark intentionally. And I waited for what I thought it was three years, but it was just three seconds or maybe three minutes until the answer came back. And there were no letters this time. There were three crying emojis <laughs> that paved the road for me to be compassionate, right? You know what the student was doing in this case, right? And so I wrote in block capital letters when with big question mark this time. And the student says, tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. <laughs> I wrote the letter and your teachers will. But, you, but I cannot guarantee that the letter for Sierra begins with Sierra and ends with Sierra. It may end with Mary, because you know what we do? We copy and paste from old letters. And we don't have the time when you don't give us the time. So while you are working on your application, make sure that your recommenders are working. Don't wait for that at the last minute. When you finish your application, then you go for the recommender. No, go now. Okay, so you have now the application process in itself. Let's talk for a few minutes about the program. 
and why you should apply. Because you will have many questions and you need to talk to others. It is a program away from home, but it's a, a home away from home. Church, if you go to church, will organize church runs and you will go to the church of your denomination. It is not your church back home, but it's your denomination. Supermarket. You know that you have the food free and you can go then uh, within certain times uh, and depending on the campuses it may vary, but you will be able to go to the supermarket. I don't know why if you have food free that you have to go to the supermarket. Some students in, on some campuses sign for the field trip to go to the supermarket just for the pleasure of going to a supermarket. Oh, please. You know, if they need to do supermarkets, you know, uh, uh, do it for me, but ah. Uh, you know, anyway, they can go and will supervise that. The church runs are also supervised. The students may forget at home some things. And I guarantee you that they arrive on a Saturday or a Sunday and by Wednesday, they are receiving packages. We have to ask one person in our office on each campus to work on packages. And so you can send packages. That reduces the sense of nostalgia more. Send something. They will welcome that. Because if you don't, they will call you and say, Mom, everybody in my hall is getting something. Send something now. I'm the only one not getting anything. And then Mom, you ask somebody at home, or you do it yourself, or Dad, you bake cookies, and you send the cookies. And what happens? I'm working, my staff is working there, and we see you opening the cookies. Mom, remember. We are working there. So when you send them something, <laughs> we love cookies, OK? But you can do that. Hey, one year on a campus called Moorhead State University, my campus director, his name was Charlie, Charlie got a call from the U USPS postal office. And they said, Charlie, you need to come and get this. We're not delivering this package to you. It was a refrigerator. <laughs> Mom and dad, if what it takes for you to let them go is to send a refrigerator, by all means, send it. <laughs> because you will have to take it back. And that's even worse, okay? And so, remember that we are creating home away from home. Some call, there are rules and regulations. Some rules and regulations for the well-being of the community are non-negotiables. And you will understand certainly that there are no um, firearms, no alcohol, no drugs. The students will be sent home with our crying, but we will. We have, in the many, um, in the 39 years, we have sent a few, not many, not many. The last one I remember we sent one was 2016. But that can happen, and we, the students will know. The pleasure of my job is to work with students like you that understand that with rights come responsibilities. And so um, there are rules and regulations for the well-being of the community that are non-negotiable, and there are other rules that you may disagree at this point. And I'm going to say a few things here. Sierra and other students can help you understand you will not be able to bring your computers. There will, there will be access to computers uh, in the libraries or in, on, in the lounges uh, on campuses, but you will not. Understanding that this is a choice. If you really need your little sister called computer, then you will stay taking care of your little sister at home. But we are here to create a community. You can bring your cell phone, but stays in your room. 
You don't use your cell phone outside your room. Now, if you need your little brother called cell phone, you stay at home with your little brother. There are many other students who can come without. It is a rule that people don't complain. And I can tell you that they never complain about it. They may not like it, but they understand why. Keep in mind that 20 years ago, when nobody had a cell phone at your age, I didn't have to say that here. You know what I had to say at that time? Young men and women, you cannot bring your TV. <laughs> Who cares now? And in 10 or 20 years from now, you are going to to, to see other people who will be laughing about the cell phone. Life, understand me, I'm not opposed, and the GSP is not opposed to the cell phones. We are opposed to the fact that our best and brightest, a phrase that I don't use on campus, you know that, Sierra. The best and brightest are letting computers and cell phones control your minds when it has to be the opposite. You need to control the cell phones. You need to control the computers, not let them control your bright mind, which you already have, and it's a big gift. Anyway, calls, because of that, from campus to home will decrease, and mom, especially dad, will get upset, because you are not calling. Enough. About 2009 and 2010, one of the, those last years when I was a campus director, I got the call on a Sunday from a father. And the father said, Aris, my son Michael, I'm gonna use Michael, but I know the real name, it's not Michael. My son Michael has not called home in 10 days. And I'm coming to get him because I just don't understand what's going on there. Now, I tried to say the, to the father, you can watch the, the website every other day. Now you can watch the website every day to see what's happening on campus. Back then was every other day. And I said, but you know, stay by your phone. You don't need to, to make that trip to the campus. Stay by your phone. Michael will call you at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And I explained to the dad in very detailed what I was going to do. And with all due respect to Michael and to him. So the next morning we had, on a Monday morning, we had a community meeting with all the students in the auditorium. And I come to them, you know, it's one of those meetings that they are scared. I'm scary. I am. And I said, Michael, where are you? And Michael, thinking that he had won the biggest award in his life, raised the hand right away. They are very responsible. That's, my, that's the beauty of my job. And I say, Michael, would you join me on stage? And Michael, fast. <laughs> Michael comes here and says, and I said, Michael, I have a question. Have you called your dad? And Michael mm -hmm. says, well, Aris, I have, but the line was busy. Michael was lying. <laughs> some of you, some of you, and I remember when the lines were truly busy. <laughs> Not anymore, you can leave a message now. But I didn't tell Michael he was lying. And I said, well, Michael, do you wanna go home? No. But your dad is on his way here. I was lying now. <laughs> and, and I said, you need to call him. Oh, Reese, but I don't have my cell phone. Oh, I know you don't have your cell phone, but I have mine. Let's dial your dad. And of course, I had explained the dad everything. So the dad was on the other side. Michael, before your dad answer, remember three things quickly. Dad. I apologize. Leaders like yourself need to apologize, get it off your shoulder, and move on to, to better things in life. Number two, you are going to say, I promise I will call you. And you will. 
Leaders, when they promise, the real leaders will. And, and Michael, the third thing you're going to say is, Dad, I love you very much. And Michael said, oh, Reese, do I have to say number three? And I said, yes, you do. And I want to hear, hear, and everybody, right? You want to hear? So Michael was responsible, and he called home with my cell phone and says, Dad, I apologize. I will call you, promise. And Dad, and then Michael said, do I have to do that at least? <laughs> and I said, three times now. It's enough. Say it three times. So Michael quickly says, Dad, you know this, but I love you, I love you, and I love you. Click. I did not close that. I did not close. Michael thought I had closed that, but I waited for the dad to listen to the applause because everybody by now is applauding. And you know why? Because everybody after that meeting went to his or her room and called home. Michael was not the only one. But Michael's dad was the one who called us. You understand? We create an extraordinary community. You know this, Sierra. It's wonderful. The students will understand rights and responsibilities. That's what I resign my job at U of L. Once I get my, you know, this is my, my, my world. This is what I like to do. But to get in, it's an extraordinary application. Hey, Doug, come. I'm going to do a short recognition before we go. We normally do those letters that you received here, but because of the circumstances these days, if you are here from Elizabethtown, when I read your name, E-Town High School, when I read your name, please stand up and hold the applause, everybody, please. Jackson Ballard, Landon Casey, Kaylee Davis, uh, mom or dad, if you're here instead also, you can, I, I knew that. <laughs> Nathan, um, is it the, the Muth? Nathan, it's correct, the Muth? Mm -hmm. E-Town, Chase Mormon, Chloe Hornback, Brennan Price, Leah Schaefer, Braden Shearer, if I have not missed anyone, please, let's congratulate the E-Town High School. <laughs> if you are here from Fort Knox, Sarah Beatty, Thaddeus Brown, Abigail Crocker, Fort Knox High School. I have two students from North Harding Christian High School, Sarah Hollis and Kushaya Rees. Is correct? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm going to read a list that will be here tomorrow. I saw the line. Central Harding, hold the applause. Kendall Ashlock, Anna Basho, Clifford Collins, Jillian Cornett, Isabella Enlow, Maya, hey Maya, is it Guillaume? Yes. Guillaume. Jacob, is it Giranek? Giranek. Lily Keith. How many pages I have? You are wonderful to be here. We appreciate it. Patrick Lally, Grace Lowther, or Lowther, Kylie or Markham, is it Kylie or Kelly? Kylie. Kylie Markham, Elizabeth Martin, Jessica Monroe, Danielle Nolan, Logan Partlow, Sierra Patrick, Grace Peak. 
We are only at the letter P. <laughs> Avery Richardson, Priscilla Rex, Isabella Sexton, Gabrielle Sutherland, Julia Tapp, Alicia Tovar, Timothy Woods, and Yates. And if I have not missed anybody, Central Harding High School. <laughs> North Harding High School, and I will recognize the counselors of these three schools in a few minutes. North Harding High School, Rebecca Covington, Jocelyn Crutcher, Brianna Davis, Anaya Ellis, Tyler Endicott, Lauren Galvin. Is it Braden Heron, Katie Hook, Ariana Lewis, Sandra Love, Caitlin Matthews, Faith Ramos, Cameron Schaefer. If I have not missed anybody, North Harding High School. John Harding High School, Nicholas Blakeman, Ferris Tout, Jenna Longhofer, Zuri Lowe, Braden Marcusen, Amaya Moses, Nash Powers, and if I have not missed anybody, John Harding High School. Thank you. I will only say two things. First of all, to recognize the school counselors that are with us tonight. Um, I have Jamie Chidwood from North Harding. Jamie, thank you for coming tonight. And I have Maggie Vogel from John Harding. Maggie's in the back. And Whitney Carpenter from Central Harding. You have been very gracious to accept our invitation. I'm going to tell you one thing before I let you go. There are, there's one question that is a scary question for the minds, the type of minds that you have. How about if I don't make it? That's a scary question in life. If you think about it, you need to try. Correct, Sierra? Because you don't want to get to my age and then think the more, the more terrifying question, how about if I don't try? That is a question that you don't want to ask yourself later. So for that matter, remember, we need to try. That is our mission in life. I hope to have been given to you enough information about the GSP and to see many of you from the Harding County overall schools, the you know, Central Harding, North Harding, John Harding, Elizabethtown, North Harding Christian, and Fort Knox, many of you next summer on one of our campuses and welcome you, mom and dad. By then, I apologize that we can only have one guest tonight, but you understand, and but hopefully next summer. Now, remember, this past summer, we were five weeks, okay? Last summer, I only was one week because I didn't have one campus. But if I had had that campus, five weeks. It is important to take care of ourselves within the circumstances of health in our community, but not be afraid. Not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. Because life will give to us a lot of things and we need to move on. Do what we have to do, but move on. So thank you so much for coming tonight. We hope we'll be here if you have any questions, okay? Thank you, God bless. <laughs>